welcome back to Belly Eckers Kitchen. You guys, today is Saturday when we're shooting this. Tomorrow is Sunday, October 1st. And tomorrow we are having a big family shindig here at the farm. We are celebrating Mama's 76th birthday, Desi's 17th birthday, and my nephew Kyvin's 19th birthday. So everybody's pitching in, everybody's bringing stuff for this uh, party, but I am also making a whole bunch of stuff. So, I mean, look at all of this. This is all ingredients we're gonna have to get through. So, <laughs> so bear with me, let's get to cooking. All right, you guys, so uh, I already have eggs boiling. Um, that's just in my Instant Pot. Got some eggs boiling, so then uh, here in just a little bit, we can make some pea salad. I was gonna make potato salad, so I got the stuff to make potato salad, and then my mother-in-law said, hey, I'll bring potato salad, which is awesome. I really appreciate her. And so we decided we'll just make some pea salad because we've got cans of peas here that we can um, utilize and make some pea salad. But first, let's start with the pinto beans. Um, I'm gonna be making those in the crock pot. Uh, because I don't have a range to boil those uh, beans and the Instant Pot is just not big enough for uh, the amount of beans that we're going to need. What I'm doing here, I'm putting these beans in this crock pot. Uh, rule of thumb with beans and rice. Uh, if you're going to make them, just know that once the uh, once they get cooked, they do double in size. So I like to do this so that I can kind of see how much space I have. It looks like I have enough space with that many beans that I won't run into an issue later of having to change the pot or, add, or put this into a different pot. I do not soak my beans overnight. Uh, my mom never did, so I don't. Uh, I used to have never I never grew up making them in the crock pot either, but Rusty, when we got together, he would make beans in, in the crock pot, and I was like, I never even thought about that. So that is really cool um, that he was able to show me that. All right, so I'm going to sit down here and kind of go through the beans. Yes, I do. Rusty's setting up a fan for me. He's so nice because I'm going to have two roasters go in the Instant Pot and the crock pot going it's going to get pretty warm in here so uh when cleaning beans when we were kids we used to get put to clean beans if we were being ornery or not listening mom would say go clean the beans so uh i've got plenty of practice with it <laughs> uh, i usually basically you're looking for rocks or um any of the beans that are, don't look real good uh the hollow beans i always pick out the halves too you don't have to you're gonna have more that break in half but I just pull those out right away because usually those will float to the top and you kind of want uh, yeah, you don't want them to float here's a hollow bean I don't know if you guys can see that but it does have a little bit of a hole in it and so then it becomes hollow now I've got those cleaned I got out the stuff that I don't want all right you guys um, I switch gears here just a little bit my instant pot went off um, a while ago I did turn it back on I forgot to set a timer on that I like to boil the eggs for 10 minutes um, I'm gonna pull them here in just a second I'm pretty sure they've been boiling for a little over 10 minutes I did put ice in the bottom of my bowl here and I'm just gonna fill this bowl with ice water because I when I pull the um, eggs, I want them to go directly into the ice water. All right, so I'm just going to let those eggs. Um, down before I go to peel them I'm going to be using those in my um, in the uh, pinto beans I mean in the uh, pea salad I don't have a huge colander I have bigger colanders I have a lot more utensils and stuff 
but um, right now all of that stuff is in the storage outside. I'm hoping to bring that in soon. Uh, there's another half left. So I'm going to have to rinse this a uh, little at a time. Just rinse those beans off. It was a little bit hollow, so it was floating. See how it's just a hollow half bean there. All right, so all I'm putting in here is water. That's it. No seasoning right now. The seasoning does not go in till the very end, like when it's almost done. That's when I'll put the salt and the lard. All right, you guys. So back in the day, I used to make cakes for my kids for their birthdays. And sometimes I just kind of went overboard and um, I've made, I made my own fondant. Like, made a caricature of uh, my oldest daughter for her 16th birthday. Rusty used to dress up like Sparky the um, uh, Dalmatian for when he worked when he was a firefighter and he would go to schools and, and do parades and things. And so I made a little caricature of that edible caricature with a uh, homemade fondant. Uh, I've made Call of Duty cakes and um, I'm trying to think uh, of all the things that I've done um, for the kids. Uh, Des Bryant cake for Cody. Anyway, I used to make those all, all those cakes and do all of those things. Today's cakes that I am making are not going to be extravagant. They are not going to be um, anything. They're just boxed cakes and I'm going to try to pack them with flavor and just, uh, just so we have dessert. So uh, yeah, I'm doing that, not, not the latter, right? So one thing about uh, box cakes, you need to put warm water in them. That kind of activates the flavor. That really works for the uh, chocolate cake, uh, but it does also work for um, the white cakes or the yellow cakes. And I think this is just a regular yellow cake. I'm just gonna do this one. We'll probably just frost it in the pan, honestly, instead of trying to find something to set it on top of and do all of that stuff. Um, in the chocolate cake, we will add some things in, there, in it as well. And I think we're just gonna make, I have round cake pans. I'm just trying to find stuff that will fit in the roasters. Um, and for those, I will, um, for that cake, I'll add some more stuff in that cake mix and I'll show you guys what I'm talking about. Just to kind of enhance the flavor. And then I plan on putting a strawberry pie filling in the center of that. So this um, yellow cake calls for three eggs, uh, oil, and I put warm water in it. I'm also going to add a little bit of vanilla, but I'm going to add my homemade vanilla made with spice rum. You guys, so I've had this um, vanilla. I think I uh, put the vanilla beans in the spice rum probably about nine months ago. Um, it smells absolutely amazing. It smells like rum mainly, but I'm just gonna put a teaspoon of this right in with with the um, cake mix. This, but do you see the little specks there in that? That is from the vanilla, that. When you know that you have real authentic vanilla that has been, it's um, alcohol that is infused with those vanilla beans. It's absolutely amazing. I did put a link uh, in the description below um, from Amazon to be able to get those vanilla beans specifically for to, to make a vanilla extract. Normally you use vodka or a clear uh, alcohol. I used spice rum because I wanted to try that. Okay, so it's a nine by 13, 34 to 38 minutes. I'm gonna put that, I already have my, um, 
I already have this roaster heating up, so I don't want to set that directly on the bottom of the roaster. And the reason for that is it's going to get hot there first. So I want to kind of elevate it so that the heat can kind of just envelop that, um, that cake pan. I don't know where the racks are for these roasters. This roaster is actually my brother's and he didn't bring a rack with him. So I am just using some um, jar um, rings. All right, looks like we're leaning this way a little bit. So we need to improvise. Don't want my cake to just slide all this way. Oh, that's much better. There we go. There we go. Tells me my floor slants. Okay. I'm gonna put the lid on that roast and we're gonna bake that. We're gonna bake that baby for about 34 to 38 minutes. Got that one in the oven. <laughs> so now we're gonna do um, the chocolate cake mix. This is a dark, dark chocolate fudge. Um, oh, this is brownies. That's not good. All right, you guys. So we are all about rolling with the punches here. So originally I was going to do a chocolate cake round cake and I was going to um, put strawberry uh, pie filling in the middle. Um, I grabbed this chocolate pie or chocolate um, cake mix and it is actually brownies. You can um, still elevate the flavor on brownies. Got a couple of ways to do that. Still want the warm water. And then it is asking for a half a cup of oil. So with your cake mix, with your chocolates, the cool thing is you can add vanilla to it as well, but I'm not gonna put that rum in the brownies. But take a half a teaspoon of cinnamon And this is going to just blow your mind, probably, a quarter of a teaspoon of cayenne pepper. It does not make it spicy. It just brings out that chocolate flavor like you have never known. It is the craziest thing. It is not spicy. It, it just brings out that chocolate. Okay? Oh, I forgot my egg. I thought there was something missing. Want it. All right, so now that we have that all mixed together, I'm gonna add some semi-sweet chocolate chips. These are some chocolate explosion brownies here. Now this looks like an eight by eight pan. So that means this will cook for 34 to 37 minutes. And this is already preheated. Put one little thing in there. All right, so those should be done around the same time. Pretty close to being done around the same time. So now I need to shift gears um, because both of my ovens are busy. So uh, let's go ahead and start making some puddings and some uh, salads. All right, you guys. So I am peeling these um, eggs for the pea salad. And by putting them in cold water right away, ice water, they peel pretty easy. But, and, and if you have fresh eggs, you know those usually don't peel very easy. 
But my brother and sister-in-law were telling me when they were here this last weekend, they gave me this hack. They said, you hit the broad end of the egg until you hear it go bink, and then it's supposed to peel really easy. So we're gonna try this. to kind of see how easy sorry my trash is really cool they peel once you put them in that ice cold water beautiful we've got one more sometimes that membrane just wants to stick to them spoke too soon ah i see what's happening when you hit the top of that it releases that membrane to the whole thing so your membrane is stuck mainly here and the hub around it ah it's the hub for all of it that's pretty cool so you learn something every day, right? That's pretty neat. Okay, so I've got sweet peas. They are drained. I did not rinse these off. Leave them just the way they are, just completely drained, and put them. Now this is how we make pea salad. Normally I put red onions in them, uh, but not everybody likes onions, so I'm not gonna put any onions in them. Uh, my mom always used to make pea salad separate, like she would make uh, onions, some with onions and some without. I'm not going to get that fancy. I'm just going to say, okay, the pea salad does not have onions. So three cans of peas. I'm just going to chop these in my hand. I'm not, not going to worry about getting out the chopper or the little slicer or anything like that, the cube, you know, whatever. I'm just Now I have a jar of dill pickle relish, not sweet, not the sweet, but the, the dill pickle. I'm going to dump that entire jar in there. quarter of a cup of mayo and then if we need more we'll add them. Now I make I make all my salads the same. Uh, pea salad is made like this. Um, potato salad I make it exactly the same way. Okay now I'm going to do about an eighth of a cup of mustard. I'm gonna need more mayo than that, I can already tell. Macaroni salad, same thing. Now my mom makes macaroni salad different and I really like the way she makes it now. She makes it with ranch dressing. I'm gonna add salt and pepper. And then I'm just gonna mix it. Sometimes I will add tomatoes to my pea salad or cheese, like cheese cubes and tomatoes. I really like that. It's just really good with the mayo. If you guys have been following me for very long, you know that I am used to having two refrigerators and I only have one in this house. So, I don't have a lot of room in my refrigerator to be able to put all of these sides. So here's the hack. Get yourself some good storage bags, some that will stand up, some that will zip very nicely. This is going to take up way less space in my refrigerator than this big bowl. So I'm going to stick this in the refrigerator. And then 
we'll move on to the next one. My timer went off. Oh, look at that cake. Can you guys see that? It does look like it's going to need a little bit longer. It's a little spongy on top, so we'll go ahead and stick a fork in it and see if it's done. Oh, you know what, you guys? That cake is done. So, if you ever wondered if you can make a cake in a roaster, the answer is yes. I'm going to set this out and let this um, cool off. As you can see that my roaster was still leaning a little bit, so it did... Uh, my cake did kind of slide over, but I think it will be okay. Hey guys, so now we're gonna make some ca cowboy caviar. I have one can of uh, black eyed peas and one can of uh, pinto beans rinsed. They have been, uh, I opened them, drained them and rinsed them. And I have two cans of corn that have been drained. And I have on my palette here, I have sweet red pepper or, and orange pepper. I have a half of an onion. All of this is diced or just chopped. I have garlic. It looks like this because it's been frozen. So I have probably four cloves of garlic there. And then after breakfast this morning, I realized how spicy these actually are. So um, I didn't put very many of those jalapenos. I just did just a few just to give it a little kick. So I'm going to go ahead and give that a stir and then we will add the rest of our ingredients. I have a can of uh, diced tomatoes with green chilies. So basically your Rotel. And then I have one packet of ranch salad dressing mix. I'm gonna take my spoon here and I'm gonna mix all of that together. I love the colors, so pretty. And this is one of those salads that the longer it sits, the better it is. Okay. It will kind of all the, the um, flavors will marry together. Now I'm going to add some, lim some lime juice for that extra kick. And then, of course, some salt and pepper. Salt and You guys, I was putting this away and I just remember there's two ingredients that I forgot to put in there to make this true Tex-Mex um, cowboy caviar. That's chili powder and a little bit of cumin. So I'm just going to, I already got it in the bag. I'm just going to dump some chili powder in there and some cumin okay i'll close that up really good and then i'm going to mix that up i don't want to mix it i don't want to smush it because i don't want to smush my beans i kept thinking man that's missing something there there it is that's what it needed All right, cowboy caviar. All right, you guys, so I'm just making some banana pudding. Uh, I'm not going to make the pudding homemade. That's my sister. She can do that. She makes some amazing custards homemade. I've just never picked it up. I don't know, um, I don't know the ins and the outs of it yet. So maybe someday her and I can get together. She can show me how to do this in, um, in a video. That would be awesome. So, I just do instant pudding, but I do like to add some fresh banana into the instant pudding. So 
over here, I'm going to take a potato masher, unless you grew up Mexican, and then that's a bean masher. And I'm going to mash those up and set those aside. I just took two bananas, mushed those up, mashed those up to mush. Okay, I'll just set that aside. I have two more bananas. I don't know how much, I'm gonna make two um, boxes, set those aside washed my uh, bowl and put it in the freezer. Uh, this will help the pudding set up faster. So it's two cups of cold milk per box and I'm gonna do two boxes. four cups of cold milk and I'm doing two boxes of banana pudding. Okay. Now that that's well mixed, I am going to dump my bananas, my mushed bananas into the pudding. I probably should have got my pie pans ready first. So I'm going to put bananas in the bottom of each pan. I'm not going to put vanilla wafers at the bottom because I don't want the vanilla wafers to get mushy. I'm thinking two pans is probably going to be enough for the pudding. Lay these down flat at the bottom. Dump that right on top. banana pudding on steroids here. All right, so the, all of that is spread nice and smooth. I am just going to cover this and put it in the refrigerator and let it set. And then tomorrow I will put the vanilla wafers and I have some ready whip too kind of decorate those up. All right, you guys, so one thing I have learned about um, entertaining over the years and cooking is when, um, when you sit and you think, this couldn't be any worse. <laughs> if you can't make it pretty, make it delicious, right? So. The cake, because the roaster was tilted, it didn't bake um, evenly. So I don't want to try to frost this and do the funfetti and that frosting and whatever. So all I did is I'm just poking holes in it. I'm gonna use this strawberry pie filling. And then you, we don't even have to worry about making it uh, you know, decorating it or anything like that. It's just going to be a strawberry oh, cake. I need my little bitty spatulas to get all of that out. 
and they're not in here. They're in storage. Cake mix, or to that cake. And there you go. Strawberry cake for tomorrow. And this is a little bit hot. The brownies are done. Uh, they're still a little bit mushy in the middle, but I don't like for them to get completely, completely done in the oven because then they just get to be too hard. So brownies are done. Cowboy caviar is done. Pea salad is done. Can't even think what else. But now it's time to make Watergate salad. We normally have this during uh, the holidays but everybody seems to like it. Uh, so I'm gonna go ahead and make some for this little get together as well. All right, so let's make some Watergate salad. Um, Watergate salad's probably the easiest thing you can make. Uh, I talked about in the last live that I was not a cook, did not like to cook, did not like to be in the kitchen when I was young. Uh, it wasn't until I became an adult that I liked to cook. When I married my first husband, um, I was 19 and I didn't know how to cook, nor did I want to know how to cook. So uh, my ex-mother-in-law, uh, she's a sweet lady, I love her to death. She taught me how to make this, and then this was my job every Thanksgiving was to make the Watergate salad because it's so easy. So um, I have Cool Whip that I've left out this whole time, this entire time that we've been preparing things together. Um, so then that way it could thaw. And a lot of cool up in there. I hope that's, I hope I have enough pudding. I probably should have grabbed two packages of pistachio pudding, but this is fine. Okay, so cool whip. I'm going to do one can of crushed pineapple. I didn't even drain that. I just throw it in. And that right there smells like Watergate salad to me. <laughs> as soon as I mix that together. Like, yep, there it is. Watergate salad. Pistachio pudding. This is what makes it that lovely green color that we all know to be Watergate salad. I don't know why they call this Watergate salad. I was never told. Maybe one of those things we need to research that and figure out why it's called Watergate salad. So here's that pretty pistachio color. Maybe it's just the president's favorite salad. It could have been. That's kind of what I was thinking. Or maybe it was the best kept secret or, you know. I don't know. Here's that really pretty color. And then into this Watergate salad goes miniature marshmallows. Dump them until your ancestors say, yeah, yeah. And then the last ingredient that goes into a Watergate salad is chopped pots. You can put walnuts in it as well if you'd rather, but I don't, walnuts tear up my mouth for whatever reason. I don't know why. They just do. Uh, this is making my mouth water. I'm gonna dump the rest of those in there. Let's go ahead and get that out of my freezer. have it watergate salad now i am actually going to leave the watergate salad in this bowl and cover it and put it in the fridge because this isn't like the other salads this can actually it will get mushy so i don't want to put it in a bag to store it but we're going to give it a swirl Be a good cool down for you. Yeah. 
Wash your palate here. Good. Does it taste like Watergate salad? Mm -hmm. <laughs> and everything else is just kind of falling together. We're, we're all just going to kind of help each other out with whatever it is that we're all trying to make. So at least these things are out of the way. And, and like I said, everybody's bringing sides and different things. I hope you guys like our videos. If you do, please hit the like button. Subscribe if you haven't already. Yep, share with your friends. Leave us some comments, guys. Let us know what you think of all the stuff that Rachel's done here today. But most of all, don't forget to smash that bell and get notified of the next new video when it comes out. Yep, until next time, you guys. God bless. See ya. All right, here's some pictures and videos from the party. It went off without a hitch. Lots of cooking, lots of family. It was amazing. Enjoy. Dean wants a weed burner for Christmas. I do. Okay. <laughs> Jesus, I do.